meet again. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. So, Eve, you're not going to believe this. We have got quite a following, even though this is a surprise, Cuppa and Anatta episode. I'm calling it episode 15 and a half. Okay. So, um, for everyone else, obviously, you joined us um, on Monday at 5 p.m., the normal time of Cuppa and Anatta, and I had so many lovely comments and feedback at how amazing it was how insightful um, you were, Eve, um, and how much they enjoyed the episode. I had a bit of a shocker, actually, and um, my Instagram app decided to uh, crash on me just as I was about to save it to my Instagram TV. Had a bit of a meltdown, so I had nothing to prove of our matter. So Eve Muirhead, being an absolute legend that she is, has agreed to a short and sharp, five to ten minutes, cover and matter. So it's a bonus episode. What more do you want? Good. Exactly. How are you? Oh. Having a good day? I'm good. Yep, yeah, uh, just been training. Um, so, no, good day. The weather's terrible here in Scotland right now, so standard. So It's exactly yeah. standard here. Don't you worry. But I hope the training's going all right, even if it is. Yeah, no, it's good. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's good. I must okay. say I've got a coffee now, though. No tea. Uh, well, I, I, was, I was fearing that, that it could be coffee prime time, but I, I, I'll yeah. keep up with the don't you worry um, <laughs> just as a background again i think it would be rude not to list uh, some of your incredible achievements one of the most decorated skips in international curling right now um but also one of the most um established successful uh, british curlers in the last decade um a olympic bronze medalist in 2014 a world champion in 2013 as well as a european double European um, gold medalist. Um, so as I've said, yeah, it'd be rude not to uh, have something on record of our Nata. So I hope you don't mind. Without further ado, I've got a few things to ask from you. Is that all right? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, this takes a little bit of a different feel compared to the usual cover and Nata. But just as a background for anyone that did miss it, one of my first questions for Eve was her favourite slang word um, <laughs> in her area. So she gave me an answer, okay? So I want to build upon this, and I have found five famous Scottish slang words, okay? Oh, wow. And I'm banking on you to be able to know what they mean. Oh, wow. I'm under pressure here. Right. Okay. Now, I apologise in advance for my pronunciation. It could be terrible, but we're starting off with an easy one. Glaikit. Glaikit. So if you're glaikit, you're... A little bit stupid and you're a little bit slow in the uptake. Yeah, that's exactly what I've got written down. You know why? Because that was Eve Muirhead's <laughs> favourite Scottish language. <laughs> and did you know that before? Never heard of it. And I had to do all the time. Um, Number two, will nay. Will nay. Like you, you won't do something like, I will nay do that. Yes. Yes. And was my pronunciation okay? Say it again. Was my pronunciation okay? So, will nay. Oh, you sound like you're from a different country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Average support. Okay, we'll Average. get one. Um, bonnie. Bonnie, like nice, good looking. Yeah. Like you're a pretty person, like you're a bonnie girl. Yeah, I'll take that. Um... Brow. Brow? B-R-A-W. Bra. 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 So as if something's like good, like, oh, that's bra. Like, that's nice. Hey, you got four from four. Okay. This one. Number five. Galoot. Galoot. What? Galoot. G-A-L-O-O-T. <laughs> Galoot. Galoot. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be said. Galoot. No, I'm sorry. You beat me in that one. It means idiot. You galoot. Galoot. Ah. Oh, I might use uh, that quite often now. To be fair, four from five. I must give it to you. You've done well. Not so, um, But as I mentioned, uh, Eve Muirhead's favourite Scottish slang word is... Glake it. Glake it. Yep. I'm adding it to my 
vocabulary as we speak. Okay, moving on. So also we discussed um, how, you know, I'm, I'm baffled by, you know, the pressure that you are constantly put on and being able to hold your nerve when making um, decisive shots and decisions within curling. And it happens all the time, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, so if you could narrow it down to three things that you use in terms of your performance routine to manage your nerves, what would they be? Um, yeah, routine's a very important part for me. Um, if I was to narrow it down to three, number one would be probably a little bit of a, a chat with my vice skip, Lauren, like my third, up in the house. So we kind of both decide what shot I'm going to play. So that chat always will take place. I then um, slide down to the other end of the ice and I always do a, a funny little thing and it's what you call like the hack where you push out. So I always kind of step on one side and then turn around. Um, and then I'll have a little chat with the two sweepers and then we'll decide like what weight I'm going to throw, um, if they're happy with if the, with the ice then and things like that that I've taken. Um, so I try and always keep, obviously every time the chats may be slightly different, but the structure is the same. So I try and keep um, the same kind of routine within that every single shot and and like I said last week as well in practice we'll always try and do this so if you can try and do this as much as you can in practice then um, it's easy to replicate when you're when you're playing um, in big tournaments. Nice it, it, it is really fascinating to hear actually and I said it kind of had that similar similarity to um, to when footballers practice taking penalty kicks and stuff like that you try and get in that routine obviously in training you're never going to be able to replicate how you're feeling and that emotion and the environment. But with your performance routines, I mean, it's proven you, your track record in making those decisive shots when it matters, mm -hmm. um, you, you must be doing something right. So it's really interesting. Um, another thing that we discussed was how I am a self-confessed curling fangirl um, <laughs> and the, the nation when it comes to the Winter Olympics is hands down one of the highlights yeah. of, of those two weeks. And you discussed about how, you know, increasing the visibility and participation in the sport all year yes. round throughout the UK is really important. So if you could knuckle it down to maybe three things that you think are the most important ways in terms of raising that visibility or participation. Yeah. Um, I think it, like, as you say, once every four years in the Olympics on, that's when the profile of curling really kind of goes through the roof because I think yeah. we probably get about six odd hours prime time TV a day, which is great for about a week and a half. During the other parts of the season, maybe not so much. So I think what's important is, as you say, is we try and make that a little bit more um, kind of seasonal and all year round. So, so we're on TV a little bit more and publicising the sport. But for the sport to get out there, we do need to get more more young people involved. And I would love the sport to grow a little bit more down in England um, as well. Me being half English with my <laughs> mum's side um, being being English down in like the Isle of Wight. Um, it's amazing the amount of people that say to you, like, I really want to give Carolyn a go. And like yourself, like you said, you'd love to give it a shot. And I think there is only one ice rink um, in England. So number one would be try and grow the sport um, in the whole of Britain and not just Scotland. Uh, I think we could try and get a little bit more girls involved in, in curling as well. Like it's such a fun sport to play. Like what other sport do you get to play with your mates? Do you get to hang hang out on, on ice and, and have a right good yeah. a good laugh? Um, it's an addictive sport, I always think. Like you go, and I don't know if it's just me being so, so competitive, but you give it a shot and then you're maybe not great but you want to go back and you want to play again because you want to get better, better yeah. and better. So if we can try and um, adapt these these few things within Scotland um, and in Great Britain, hopefully the sport will grow. But for myself, all I can really do right now is um, keep trying to publicise the sport and hopefully keep doing well um, and get it out there into the media. Well, I think, you know, I, I, I'm speaking personally and I, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of a lot of people when I say what you've done for the sport of curling throughout your career has been hands down game changing. And when I think of curling, I think of Eve Muirhead, I think of all the all the incredible achievements that you've that you've achieved like throughout your career today and hopefully further on um, in your career. So you're doing a fantastic job. And as I said, 
Um, I would love to see the sport grow in terms of the the, the participation and the visibility that it really deserves. And yeah. one day Thanks. I will be gliding down the ice rink. You have to give it a shot. Definitely. I, I feel like I can talk the talk when watching you, but I think I'd be absolutely dreadful. But I will. I will 100%. Uh, you can mark my yes. words. Um, but anyway, I've got one final thing, and this is going to be quite fun, I hope. So I've got a game of Would You Rather. So this, okay. honestly, GB hockey team spend hours on on hours on end playing this game it's hilarious so i'm gonna i'm gonna kick things off i've got five questions okay would you rather win an olympic gold medal or win another world championship good question i think mm. years ago i would have said the world but right now i would 100 percent say the olympics yeah well Fingers crossed. I, I have every faith. Um, question number two. Would you rather be coached by your dad, for those that are unaware, Eve's dad is also a former world champion in 1999, or be in the same team as both of your brothers, for people that are unaware, both of Eve's brothers are uh, Team GB Olympians within curling. Tough one. Probably be in the same team as my brothers because I've already been coached by my dad. So I've experienced that before. Okay. You've saved yourself there, I think. But yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Question three. Would you rather be a bagpiping world champion? Now, in my research, I found out that you've actually competed in four bagpiping mm. world championships, which is yeah. out of or would you rather join the Ladies European Golf Tour? And also, rumour has it, that you have a pretty impressive golf handicap. Um, I think we'd have to go with golf there. Like, mm. I, I absolutely love golf. Um, and, yeah, I think we'd have to go with the golf. Have My bagpipes are fine. I can, I can play them. Like, I pick them up and I do play them. I've actually played them a little bit in lockdown. Have but you? we'll go with golf, yeah. And uh, have you had to, been able to play um, golf since... The, the lockdown restrictions have been slightly... No, not yet. unfortunately I haven't. Um, there, is the, there is the option to play now. Like you can go out in two balls, but you actually have to be a member um, at the course right now. And I'm not a member at the course up here in Stirling, but at home where my parents are in Pitlochry and Blair Athlete, I could go home and play, but it's, um, it's not really... It's not really fair to drive that far just now, just to just to have a game of golf. But definitely soon. I've been doing a wee bit of chipping in the garden. Have you? Keep, keep, keep my hand in. Have you divots? Have you? Hmm. Have you been making any divots in the grass? Well, between you and me, I've got I've got fake grass. Ah. Oh. Probably actually in the garden, you know. All catered for it. Well, there we go. So you'd rather be uh, on the Euro Ladies European Golf Tour than bagpiping world champion? Okay, heard it here first. Okay, question four. So uh, we obviously spoke about your lockdown new skills that you've picked up. So would you rather successfully execute a handstand without the assistance of a wall or would you rather bake a sourdough bagel at the mm. level of Paul Hollywood? Oh, oh. Has to be a handstand. I would just love to be able to do a handstand. Like, and walk. Do these walking handstands and... Yeah, I just, I can't do it. I've tried and tried. Can you make sure you let me know when you do do it? Because I, I will do. Yeah. I think it'll be a few years, but I'll keep you in the loop. All right, please do. Okay, so I've got one final thing. Would you rather only be able to drink Nespresso made by yourself for the rest of your life? Yeah. Or would you rather only be able to drink English breakfast tea made by someone else? Oh, God. We're going to have to go with coffee. Would you? Sorry, yeah. Uh, so, for anyone I, yes. obviously missed my... And the press machine is constantly in use here, mm. especially during lockdown. Um, but I do love a cup of tea, but coffee would just edge it for me. No brainer. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, I'm very appreciative and aware that, you know, this is this is above and beyond anything that I could have asked you to do so i really really do appreciate you taking the time again to um have a natter with me again i've really enjoyed it but i'm 
a bit more relaxed now that I know that I have something on record to prove what a fantastic advocate you are for curling, um, sport in general, and uh, what you are. So happens when it's live, live, isn't it? Your, um, your doorbell goes and you get a delivery. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's perfect timing. It's like it was meant to be, but no. Thank you so much, Eve. I really yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. Bye.